Well, now we have the idea of multiplying uh, matrices. Uh, we'll see now that if a matrix is square, you can multiply it by itself, and that's going to give you the square matrix. And you can multiply it by itself again, and you're going to get the cube of a matrix. So basically, you're going to have the idea of matrix powers. Let's take a look at that now. So, of course, it only makes sense if A is square. Uh, so uh, otherwise, you can't multiply you know, A by itself or something like that. Um, so if A is square, then A squared simply means AA. Uh, and the same for higher powers. So, for example, A cubed is A times A times A. And as we know, it doesn't matter which order you uh, multiply it in. So that's that's the that that would be, and we're going to denote it as a cubed. Now notice here that we're doing some uh, some overloading of notation again, because if someone walks up to you on the street and says a cubed, and a is a number, then you know what it is. It's the cube of the number. You multiply the number by itself, you know, three times, right? Um, but here we're doing the same thing, except a is a matrix. Uh, so, uh, but it again makes perfect sense. So that these are the matrix powers. Um, now again, uh, to, uh, to, to, it, it's going to be useful, uh, to, uh, in, in terms of the notation to define a to the zero as the identity. Now notice that that's like for a number, uh, raised to the zero power, you get one and I is something like, uh, I is something like the matrix analog of the number one. Um, well, in fact, of course, when i is one by one, it is the number one. Okay, and if you do that, then you get this very nice thing that you know that's an identity that you know holds for numbers, right? That if I if I multiply the kth power of a number times the lth power of a number, I get the k plus lth power of the number. But the same is true for 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 matrices as well, a square matrix. If I take a square matrix, I take it to the kth power, I multiply it by a the same matrix to the lth power, I'm going to get uh, the same the original matrix to the k plus l power. Okay, now. Later in this, in this book and course, we, we're going to see negative powers. Uh, for example, we're going to see, you know, A inverse, uh, which is going to be, well, the inverse of the matrix. That's actually one of our next topics. Um, uh, in more advanced courses, you will see weird things like the square root of a matrix, right? Like, you know, A to the one half, right? And you'll see all sorts of other crazy stuff like that. Um, we're not going to be talking about fractional powers in, in this course, although they do, they do come up uh, in, in, in some applications. But we will be talking about inverses. That's later. For now, we're just talking about positive powers or the zeroth power, which by convention is the identity of a matrix. So, okay. And why don't we just do a quick example? Let's just start with like, you know, 1 uh, minus 1 to 0. That's A. And so a squared, uh, in that case, uh, let's work out a squared. Well, that's going to be 1 minus 1 to 0 times 1 minus 1 to 0. You just simply multiply the two together. And when I multiply that out, the first one gives me 1 minus 2. That's minus 1. Uh, 1 times minus 1, 0 is minus 1. Uh, this times that is 2 times 1 plus that's going to be 2. And this is going to be minus 2. Okay, so the square of this matrix is that matrix there. Okay, so just just, just, just so we can see what it, what it looks like. Okay, so a lot of ap cool applications of it. Uh, we're gonna look at one that involves uh, directed graphs. So actually, you remember that several lectures ago we looked at directed graphs and we looked at uh, nodes and edges. Um, there's another way to describe a directed graph which does not explicitly enumerate the edges. So here's a directed graph right here. Actually, they're, they're closely related. If you look in the book, you'll see how uh, the description when we enumerate and label the edges can be converted to this one. So that was the uh, incidence matrix. This is the adjacency matrix. Okay. <clears throat> and it's n by n. So uh, here I have uh, five nodes in my graph. And we simply define the adjacency matrix of a graph this way. A i j is one if there is an edge from vertex j to vertex i. Notice it kind of goes backwards, right? Because A i j, you'd think it might be from i to j, but in fact it's from j to i. And I should also admit to you that there are people who use the opposite convention, so that the adjacency matrix uh, is A i j equals one means that there's a, an edge from one to from i to j, but for us it's j to i. Um, okay, and of course the two are just related by transposing. Okay, so here's an example. Here's a matrix. 
<clears throat> and now let's take a look at, let's audit a few things like, uh, well, we could do all sorts of cool things. Here's an ed, here, this edge goes from three to two. So uh, that means that A23 should have a one in it. And sure enough, it does. Let's go the other way. Let's find this. That says that A54 is one. And that means there should be an edge going from node four to node five. Let's see if that's true. It is indeed, and that's the very edge it is. And let's just audit one more just to make sure everything's cool here. Let's audit this zero here. That says that A42 equals zero. And that tells us there is not an edge going from node two to node four. And that is indeed the case. There is no edge going from here to here. Okay, so that's the idea. That's, that's the, um, this is called the adjacency matrix of a graph. It's also, by the way, a st absolutely standard mathematical concept uh, and, and kind of universal. Okay, now let's look at the square of the adjacency matrix. It's super interesting. It is this. Um, the ij entry of the square of an adjacent, well, of any matrix is this. It's the sum from k equals 1 to n, a i k, a k j. But let's figure out what that means. Well, it says we sum over all nodes and we take the product of a k j and a i k. But, but these a k j and a i j's, the a i k and a k j, they're either 0 or 1. Okay? So basically, usually this product is 0 because one of them is 0 or both of them are 0. Okay, however, there is a way when you get one. You get a one if AKJ is one and AIK is one, but that has a specific meaning. If AKJ is one, it says there's an edge from J to K, and AIK is one, that only hap that means there is an edge from K to I, okay? And so basically, you get a one whenever there is an, there's, there's an edge from J to K, and also from K to I. Now, by the way, two edges that uh, where one goes from one node to another and then another one follow, starts from that node and goes to the other one, that's called a path of length two, okay? So, for example, in this graph, you know, let me get you a path of length two. Here's one. You go uh, from here to here, uh, and then you go from here to here. So, from there's a path from node five to node two of length two, and you go along this edge and then that edge. Now, notice that the path has to go in the direction of the arrow. This is a, a so-called directed graph. Okay, so uh, what this says, what our analysis up here says is actually kind of amazing. It says that when you square the adjacency matrix, the numbers in that, the numbers in the entries tell you how many paths there are uh, that go of that length, of length two, that goes from J to I. In fact, that's a beautiful interpretation of an adjacency matrix. An adjacency matrix tells you how many paths there are of length one, that just a path of length one is just a path, and they're either zero or there's one. Zero if there's not an edge, one if there is. So this is consistent, but the square is already kind of interesting. Um, and so for example, I will spare you the details, and not to mention I would almost certainly get it wrong, but if you squared this matrix here, you would get, <laughs> assuming there's no typo here, uh, but maybe there's not, um, you would get this matrix here. Super interesting. And it's got, it's got zeros, ones, and twos. You know, that makes sense uh, because if we talk about the numbers of paths of length two, um, sometimes there's not, a, there's not a path of length two. And that means there's a zero here. But we can audit a couple of these. Um, I don't know. Let's go from node four to three, um, and that's going to be the A34 that is right here. And it says this two. Uh, so apparently there are two paths of length two that go from node four to node three. So let's 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 see if this is true. Uh oh, now's the drum roll. And we're going to go we're going to go paths of length two from four to three. Okay. So we're going to go from four to three, and this. Here are the two paths of length two. One is you go from four to three, and then you go on this. Oh, I should say 
That's called a self loop. It's kind of cool. You can have a loop that goes from yourself, uh, from yourself actually to yourself. That's called a self loop. Okay, so that's a path of length two. Here's another path of length two that goes from four to three. First, you go to five. That's your intermediary node, and then you go on to three. So it's cool. And there are no others. Uh, that's what this is telling you. Okay, so that's that's what this tells you. And so more generally, if I take the elf power of a of a matrix, which is the adjacency matrix. Um, then it's fully interpretable as uh, the ij entry is the number of paths of length L from j to i. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what this is. Um, ah, missed, there is a small typo there. Oops, okay. Um, good. Um, our last topic is to show that we can use uh, this powerful matrix notation to super compactly uh, describe the QR factorization. Not the algorithm, but the result. Uh, sorry, Gram-Schmidt. And it basically turns out that Gram-Schmidt can be interpreted as a matrix factorization. And the truth is that most people think of it that way. They, I mean, everyone has heard of the Gram-Schmidt you know, algorithm. But mostly people think of it as a factor, as a matrix factorization, which is called the QR factorization. Let's see how that goes. Well, um, so what I'll do is I'll take a matrix A. It's going to have uh, it's going to have uh, k uh, columns a1 through a k, and they're n vectors. I'm matching the notation from Gram Schmidt. Okay, so a a has dimension n by k. Now, if the columns are linearly independent, and I run Gram Schmidt, then I get uh, some orthonormal vectors. Those are q1 through qk. Okay, um, And I'll define uh, an n by k matrix q, and it's going to have these columns, right? Now, uh, we can very compactly say that the columns of q are orthonormal. That's this equation. It says that the gram matrix of the q's is the identity. And the, on the diagonal, it says that the q's have norm 1. On the off-diagonals, it says that the Q's are mutually orthogonal. So this, you will, you will henceforth, when you see the equation matrix transpose times matrix equals I, you will know basically what it's saying is the columns of that matrix are orthonormal. Okay, <clears throat> now from the Gram-Schmidt algorithm, it says that AI is equal to uh, this, that's a linear combination of Q1 up to QI, okay? Um, oh, by the way, where the coefficient of qi is actually positive, because qi tilde is positive. Uh, sorry, qi tilde is non-zero, and the norm of qi tilde is positive. Um, and so we're going to simply call those, you know, r1i up to rii. Okay. Um, now, notice that ai is a linear combination. You don't need more. You don't need qi plus two, qi plus one. These things. It's it's not it not. And so. What that tells you is that R is upper triangular, the matrix R, because uh, we'll take it to be zero for all the other entries. Um, and then what happens is, uh, is this. You can write this equation out in, as this factorization. It says that, you know, A, here's A, equals a Q, here's Q, times R, right? And not only that, R is itself, R is upper triangular, so it's only got entries here, and on the diagonal, it's got positive entries. Um, so that's that's the picture. Um, by the way, this drawing I'm doing here is actually a useful thing to do. It kind of shows you the dimensions and allows you to keep them in mind and things like that. Okay, so summary on this is that the when you carry out Gram-Schmidt on a sequence of vectors, um, <coughs> you and if if you think of the, those vectors as being the columns of a matrix, that's the same as factorizing that matrix into a product, Q and R. Q has columns that are orthonormal, and R is upper triangular with positive entries on the diagonal. And so actually people refer to, you know, QR factorization, Gram-Schmidt, um, inter interchangeably, they're not quite the same. Gram-Schmidt is, is, if you like, Gram-Schmidt is an algorithm for computing the so-called QR factorization. Uh, but this is how a lot of people would, would, would talk about it. Um, also, I guess if you look in numerical packages for uh, linear algebra, you probably wouldn't hear anything about uh, Gram-Schmidt. Um, however, you would, for every single such package, will have a QR factorization, which of course is nothing but Gram-Schmidt, expressed in matrix notation. Okay, so 
this is the QR, so-called QR factorization of A. Um, and it right now, uh, you can't see that there's no reason for you to have any interest at all in it. Uh, right now, in fact, Graham Schmidt, I think, is a bit mysterious. Graham Schmidt, the only use Graham Schmidt has at this point in the book, it's only one, is it's a way to, to computationally determine if a set of vectors is linearly independent. Okay. Now, to which I am, I am fully admitting the following. There is no reason you should care about that at this point. Because, like, I don't know, but what does it mean for vectors to be linearly independent? Does it mean the bridge doesn't fall down? Uh, I don't know. Um, we'll see later that it's going to have a lot of important things. But for right now, I'm just admitting it has no interest. Very soon, you'll see that this is actually going to be, it's going to have a lot of practical implications. I'm just admitting that we haven't seen them yet.